United Baptist Church. So if you're uh, part of that or you would like to join those folks in celebrating uh, that accomplishment next Sunday at 2 p.m. with lots of musical guests. These are the announcements, unless there's some other that needs to be made. We light then our candle and we join in our prayer. We light this candle as a sign of God's Spirit at work in the world. May its light brighten our spirits. May the light of God shine through us, brighten the world.
this morning. Good morning. First reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7 to 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills. A land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. A land where bread will not be scarce, and you will be lacking nothing. A land where the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving to you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build your fine homes and settle down, and when your birds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will not forget the Lord your God, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, the thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may save yourself. My power and strength of my hands have reduced this wealth for me. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to you, your ancestors, as to this day. We continue with our responsive song, and you will find that song today on page 833 of Voices United. And that will be Psalm 111. With our song of promise. Already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press 
on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. If, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining to what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which Jesus has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us, then, who are mature, should take such a view of things, and if on some point you think differently, that your the true God will make clear to you, only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do, for as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears. Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, that our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that we may be like his glorious body. These are the words of our Lord. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. 
When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. May God add a blessing to this and to every reading from God's holy word. Let's continue as we bow together and pray. Let's pray. Lord, in these words, may we find your word of abundant and everlasting life through Christ, our Savior and friend. Amen. So now we bring to the Lord the first part of the harvest that he has given you. Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Happy Thanksgiving again to everyone. It's no struggle at this time of year in this corner of the world to count our blessings and say thank you to the Lord for all that we have. Many of us, if we haven't already, will take a drive in the country to see the fall leaves, likely stopping at Hank's family farm or some other market to pick up fresh produce, baked goods, and a few pumpkins and hay bales to decorate our houses for Halloween. Though another storm is working about, this weekend we'll find most of us around a table with family and friends, enjoying a grand meal and conversation. And among the prayers we will say in our meal, or in our hearts, is one of gratitude, that we live in a part of the world where so many are blessed, and there is opportunity to help those who are not. We come to our church service this morning with grateful hearts ready to say thank you, but also I trust to be reminded of the greater gifts we have been given that demand a gratitude going beyond a heartfelt phrase or an annual acknowledgement and prayer. Our Thanksgiving scriptures this morning will help us to expand our grateful spirits appropriately. In the passage from Deuteronomy, we have wonderful images of harvest an offering of the first fruits to God. I recall my first pastoral charges, which were, as things happened back then, in rural places in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. The sanctuaries were filled on Thanksgiving Sunday with fruits and vegetables. We have some of those here today. And the minister was often invited to take some or all at home. Not a pitch for these, I think this is going to, this is going to the food bank. I remember in one church remarking to someone in jest at the end of the service that there seemed to be a shortage of meat. Imagine my embarrassment and delight when that church member showed up at the man's later in the day with steaks and a couple of roasts to apologize for the oversight. <laughs> we were grateful, as the Hebrew harvesters were. Note, though, in the Deuteronomy passage, there is also the recital of how the nation of Israel came into being. We were slaves in Egypt, and God set us free and gave us our own land. It was God who created the people, and if they were willing to be faithful, preserved the people. It was God's grace in the law and the prophets that made the nation what it was and the people who they were. The Old Testament is a very frank record of the relationship of how the people suffered when they were unfaithful, how God forgave and restored them when a few or even one person was faithful, and how God promised that his goodness would be given to all nations through his own intervention in human history. We are here today because of that intervention, because of Jesus Christ, God in the world, reconciling all peoples to God and supplying to all people God's powerful spirit of love and service. St. Paul tells us in his letters that God not only created us, but directed us to live lives like Christ's. 
And in the Gospel of Luke, we have a powerful illustration of what gratitude can accomplish in the Christian context. The situation of the lepers Jesus encountered along the border between Samaria and Galilee resonates with our present situation because lepers in Jesus' time and for many centuries after were required to self-isolate. That didn't mean they went off to comfortable homes for a couple of weeks and then rejoined society. They were banished for life from society, having to live in small colonies of their own and depending on begging or more formal charity to survive. You may recall the scene in the Charlton Heston film, Ben-Hur, when he visits his sister and mother in a leper colony, or know the history of lepers being placed on small islands in the Atlantic region in the 18th and 19th centuries, and even later. I was reading of uh, leper facilities in New Brunswick, where the last patient was transferred out to a regular hospital in 1965. That doesn't seem very long ago when you're talking about lepers in the Bible and you can come right up to 1965 and see that that example of people uh, in that situation is still with us. These are heartbreaking examples that remind us of how bold and desperate the lepers in today's scripture had to be to approach Jesus and his disciples. They may have hoped for just a kind word and blessing or a few coins. But instead, they received a miracle. Following Jesus' instruction, they went to the priests for a blessing and were healed of their horrible affliction. It's astounding, of course, that this miraculous cure is not even the point of the story. Nine of the now healthy men ended their quarantine and returned to their families and their former lives. No doubt they were grateful. Who wouldn't be? But only one man returned to say thank you. Jesus' response was to ask first where the other nine were. And he doesn't ask why they hadn't returned to say thank you to him, but why they passed on the opportunity to praise God. The man who did return to acknowledge the blessing bestowed on him received another blessing, a healing and liberating of the Spirit with the declaration your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. I have to think the man carried those words with him for his entire life and asked himself from time to time, if my faith could accomplish that, what else might I be able to do with my faith? That, friends, is the question we need to ask ourselves because we too have been healed by Christ. Sometimes it is the body, but it is always the mind and the spirit daily. If God and Christ can heal us once, we know God can continue to bless us as individuals and as a community of faith. We count our blessings this weekend, but we have an opportunity to multiply the blessings of others by means of our faith in God's generous and unswerving ability to do so through us. Know today and always that your faith can make the world well. Let us pray. Thanksgiving, Lord, should be a beginning in our lives for greater service to you. Make it so, we ask in Jesus' name.
invite it now to our spirits and still our hearts as we bow together for a time of prayer. To the spoken prayer and the shared prayer, please add in your hearts the needs of your own life. Let us pray. Loving and generous God, we come to this day with grateful hearts for all that we have received, but most and always for all that we can be in Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for an abundant outflow of your Holy Spirit within our individual lives, our families, our community, and our church. May we always be ready to be more for you, more generous, more forgiving, more light-hearted, more grateful. Help us to embody the love that was brought to us in Jesus Christ, in his life and service and sacrifice, and in his gift of the Spirit. We pray for ourselves, but we pray most for the wider world. We read stories of the Holy Land, and we know that this day it is a place of war and turmoil. We ask that there may be peace in that place and in the wider world, that suffering may end, that conflicts may be resolved, that these ancient troubles may be resolved by your spirit and by people of goodwill from all faiths, from all generations. We pray for the other places where there is war. We pray, pray for the people of Ukraine and of Russia and of all of the places where lives are upset by this conflict. We pray for the places where there is natural disaster, where climate change continues to upset the natural order. We pray for strength to address these human problems. If we have the potential to create them, we have the potential to resolve them. May that be in our hearts as we move on into the future that you have planned. Bless us now, today, and in the week ahead. Bring us to our worship again. Hear the prayer that has been spoken. Hear the prayers and needs of each life and the prayer you taught us to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are always grateful, especially for the support that is given to our local church, but we also want to acknowledge and encourage you to remember our mission and service work. A portion of what we did does go to the operation of our Denomination, the United Church of Canada, but also to the various causes that uh, fall under the umbrella of mission and service. The service part is the operation of the church and uh, homegrown uh, causes, and the mission part is, of course, work with our partners overseas. The missionary model of old has been transformed over recent decades so that we do not go and say, here's what we're going to do for you, but we humbly go and say, how can we help you with what you're doing for each other as partners in our world mission? So we remember mission and service, and in weeks ahead, we will be bringing you more detailed information in our minute for mission. We did have, we did have a bit of a conversation as to how long that might be, and I think someone, someone remarked, I think it was Google, you know, it could be a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to be literal about it, but we will have a minute or maybe a few more minutes for our mission work in the weeks ahead. For now, we are invited to contemplate the work that is accomplished uh, by our gifts.
bless you, O God, for life and for all the experiences that have helped to make us whole. Thank you for feeding and housing us, for multiplying our possessions, and for leading us through difficult times and places. Now, in these moments, we pour out our praise and review our vows of faithfulness. You have enriched us for great generosity. Therefore, we dedicate with joy these contributions that symbolize our loyalty to Christ. May they proclaim good news, even as we live out the gospel in other places. We praise you, O God, for setting us free from limitations and from our ingratitude. Amen. I'm going to go again, but now thank you all. Now thank you all, our God. 236 million. <coughs> Thank you.